Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Spaceman TV. I am the Spaceman, and I've landed in your area once again. And tonight will be the first episode of All Things Weird Reside Here. Happy All Hallows Eve, everyone. I hope you're having a good one. Tonight I'm smoking my Missouri Meerschaum Bent Apple Corn Cob Pipe. And in the pipe, I've got some Cornell and Deal Haunted Bookshop. I'm also enjoying a good cup of espresso. And that blend is Cafe Bustello. I always love my coffee. But anyway, tonight I'm going to be sharing a tale from a publication titled Weird New Jersey. Weird New Jersey is a publication by Mark Skirman and Mark Moran. And tonight's tale comes from the Pine Lands or Pine Barrens of New Jersey, whichever you'd like to call it. I lived in the Pine Barrens, New Jersey for 50 years before moving down south. Approximately 15 miles to the east of me was a town called Mays Landing, New Jersey. And about 25 miles inland from Atlantic City to the west. This story comes from an anonymous writer and is from issue number 21. So, we begin the story, shall we? The Thing in the Woods. Now, before I start the story, if you're familiar at all with the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, you know it's associated with the urban legend of the Jersey Devil, amongst other creepy, crawly manifestations. It can be a beautiful place to take a nice stroll during the day or night whatever you choose into the forest but it can also be a very creepy uninviting place where things crawl around and strange paranormal occurrences can be found So with no further ado, let the story begin. The Thing in the Woods Although most of this story will seem quite unbelievable, it is 100% true. I've changed the names of those involved to protect their anonymity. It all started on a cold November night in 1989. My parents had gone away for the weekend and I decided to have a few friends over. It was early in the evening and we were all starving. None of us had a car, so we decided to walk to the local McDonald's about a mile away. This is a McDonald's where I used to eat when I was traveling through this place, incidentally. As soon as we walked out my door, we noticed an extremely bright star in the sky. We all acknowledged it, but figured it was probably just Venus or some other natural phenomenon. It seemed to follow us on our walk to and from McDonald's. Kind of like the way the moon follows you in a car, except that the moon stays where it is. This thing was in different parts of the sky. 
When we arrived back at my house, some of my friends decided to get on the roof to watch this thing. Myself and a girlfriend went into one of the upstairs rooms to get a little alone time. The others were all on the roof. I could hear them through the window pondering what it might be. Then I heard my friend Brian shouting, Take me! Take me! All of a sudden, an immense light came through the window accompanied by a loud roar. Everyone on the roof was screaming. Then I heard a couple of thumps more screaming than total silence. I got up and ran outside and was greeted by a few of my neighbors. They were all asking if I'd seen the bright light. One of them thought that an airplane was crashing into our house. Very quickly my friends came scampering off the roof. Where's Brian? I asked. They told me he was in the backyard. They were all so frantic and white as ghosts. He's hurt real bad, they told me. We all ran to the backyard where Brian was lying on the ground screaming. My neighbor picked him up and rushed him to the hospital. We later found out that he broke his arm and collarbone in the fall. Another neighbor called the police. The police arrived just as my friends started to talk about what happened. They said that they observed the light slowly getting closer. Brian stood up and decided to taunt it. Then in a split second the object was directly over them. A beam of blue light came out of the bottom and paralyzed Brian. Then it turned the beam off and very rapidly jumped into the woods behind our development. Brian slumped over and rolled off the roof. No one believed the story. Even I was skeptical. I did see the light though, as did my neighbors. The cops thought it was pretty funny and wanted to know if we'd been drinking. They claimed that a search through the woods turned up nothing. The next day on the radio station 97.3, the DJs talked about many people in Mays Landing reporting UFO sightings that night. You're probably thinking that this is the end of the story, right? Well, it's only the beginning. Exactly one week later was Thanksgiving. It had snowed about six inches the night before and everything was white. I remember that Thanksgiving. It did snow and it was strange. My house is right next to the woods and everything looks so pretty. I grabbed my dog and decided to go for a walk. I headed down the trail toward the clay holes. This area contains a couple of ponds intersected by a river. My dog played around in the water for a bit and came out shivering. I figured that I'd better get him back to the house before he froze to death. We started back down the trail when I noticed that my footprints weren't the only ones headed for the water. These were the prints that I have never seen before. They almost looked like a huge hand, at least 10 inches across, with hooked extremities. A cold chill ran down my spine as I remember my experience a week ago. I started following them backwards and was surprised that they had stopped. A few yards down the trail they would pick up, then stop. I heard something behind me and my dog started going nuts, barking and urinating all over the place. That's when I noticed right behind me there were prints walking in my direction then off into the woods that were not there a second ago. I decided not to wait around to see what left them. I ran as fast as I could the whole way home. I told my dad what I saw and he had to see it for himself. The prints had followed me almost the whole way back. My dad, an avid hunter, claimed he'd never seen anything like it before. He persuaded me against my better judgment to follow them into the woods. We followed them for what seemed like an eternity. The same pattern, ten prints, then nothing, ten prints, then nothing, as if it were jumping, then abruptly nothing. We searched around, but there were no more prints. At this point, both of us were totally weirded out and decided to walk back. My dad was so perplexed that he called the police. An investigator came out and inspected the prints. 
he said that other strange prints had been found in Arizona and around Dover Air Force Base. Always the same, the prints would go a few feet, then disappear. He genuinely did not know what caused them. I had a pretty good idea of what caused them and I aimed to prove it. So mustering up all of my teenage bravery, I rounded up my three friends, Matt, Dennis, and Dan. We grabbed whatever we could find, hatchets, butcher knives, and the like, and set off into the woods. Soon we picked up a new set of tracks and followed them off the trail. We walked for about a half hour zigzagging all over the place. Then the tracks ended. We scanned the forest for more tracks. As I looked around, my eyes caught movement by a close tree. I figured it was just my imagination. Then something that I'm not sure I can describe stepped out from behind the tree. Its legs were short, thick, and very powerful looking. Its feet resembled a gorilla's, only much bigger. Its body, arms, and hands were quite slender and didn't seem to match its legs or head. The head was egg-shaped and proportioned to its legs. Its face was featureless, although I could make out a small mouth and large blue-black eyes. The eyes weren't like your run-of-the-mill alien, though. They were proportioned to its large head and were round, not the typical almond shape. I don't recall a nose or ears. The skin color was brown, smooth, and sort of reminded me of a dolphin. I froze in fear and could not move. It did not look menacing, but definitely otherworldly. I tried to run, but could not. I tried to scream, but could not. Dennis, the biggest out of the bunch, picked me up and started running for the trail at full speed. The rest followed. We got to the trail and noticed Dan was not with us. A few moments later, he appeared. His face was bleeding profusely. We didn't wait for an explanation. All of us ran as fast as we could to our development. On the way to the hospital, Dan told us that he tripped and fell. The axe he was carrying landed blade up and his chin hit, hit it under all of his weight. He said that as he was getting up, he turned around to see if this thing was following him. He claims it was standing right next to him and patiently waited for him to get up, then proceeded to prance behind him while he ran, as if wanting to play. We made a pact right then and there never to tell anyone about that day. This thing didn't seem to want to hurt anyone and was best left alone as far as we were concerned. I didn't return to those woods for four years, even though they were right next to my house. I was just too scared. Matt, Dan, Dennis, Brian, and me all went our separate way in high school and didn't really talk anymore. I was 19 now and had a whole new set of friends. Friends who wanted to scare their girlfriends one night by walking in the woods next to my house. I was totally against it, but they insisted and soon I was talked into it. We didn't walk far down the trail before the girls were scared out of their minds. We stopped for a moment because the girls heard something rustling in the leaves. The rest of the guys told them it was only deer. Then as clear as I could see the rest of them, I saw the creature standing right behind one of the girls. I calmly, though scared to death, told them we should start back immediately. Then it let out a shriek like nothing I've ever heard before. We all started running and were soon back at my front porch. One of the girls claimed that she saw it, but I'm not so sure. She described it as tall and skinny, but what I saw was exactly the same thing I saw four years earlier. I have not been in those woods since. 
I'm now pushing 30 and recently moved back to my into my childhood home. My parents now live a couple of states away. I work weird hours so I am awake through most of the night. I've heard very strange noises coming from the woods, from long low rumbles that seem to shake the house to unearthly shrieks. Not long ago I was dumping my leaves into a compost pile a few feet in the woods when I was approached by some of the children in the neighborhood. They told me not to go too far in because a few of their friends had seen a monster in there. I laughed to myself knowing full well that whatever it is, I don't think it's dangerous, but I must admit that when I pull up in front of my house at night, I run straight for the door. So why am I breaking the pack? Well, I'm hoping that someone will have the balls to try to communicate with this thing. I truly feel that it is not dangerous. Any doubters? Those brave enough can find this thing in Mays Landing between Walker's Forge Road and Route 50. There are many new houses in this area. These people know something is back there and don't like strangers snooping about. Don't trespass and please don't hurt this thing if you encounter it. Anonymous. Well, that's the story. And there was a response to this story in Weird New Jersey issue number 22. Here's the response. It may have been the thing in the woods. Dear Weird New Jersey, I grew up in Dorothy about 10 miles outside of Mays Landing and this relates to your story of the thing in the woods in issue number 21. At about 3 o'clock in the morning I was dropping a friend off at home on 11th Avenue which is about 1 to 2 miles from the location stated in the article. We heard a scream unlike anything I have ever heard. It sounded like a woman, cat, and bird all at once. That is the best way I can describe it. All I can remember is my hair stood straight up on my neck and it sent shivers down my spine. Now I have never seen anything like what is described in the article, but throughout the years I have had eerie feelings when I would go through that area. Stacy Wellington. So there you have it, folks. New Jersey, the Pine Barrens. No doubt a weird place to venture to to visit, let alone live there. I lived there myself for 50 years. And I myself saw some pretty strange things in those areas. So that is the end of the tale. I wish you all a happy All Hallows Eve. And don't scare yourself too much because it's not over yet. I am the spaceman and I just might be flying over your place and land in your area next time around. So I'll see you in the next show. Adios.